Hello folks, welcome back. Wow, look at this. A normal video to normal time, or somewhat normal video. I'll warn you guys right now, there's gonna be a lot in this video. Um this is my raw this is my WWE Raw show, but I have some recaps to do. Let's see here. Where was it? This was an amazing past weekend of wrestling. Although I didn't need that Sunday off from wrestling. Let's see here. Two great shows. The hell was that? I don't know. Whatever. Cleaning up, packing up later. First, the one I did. Triple Mania, as per, as predicted by. Who did that? Oh yeah, Iho del Hobo el Vagabundo dos. So now you can see the prediction. The predictions. There are a bunch of X's there. X, 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 X. Uh, I hate to say it. He only got three and a half out of the seven matches, right? Iho del Hobo el Vagabundo. He is just a mark. I don't think I've ever been skunked, though. I've been close, but not zeros. However, for Final Resolution, which I watched, again, very entertaining, Dr. Tom. Well, look at that. Well, look at all those check marks. A few X's, but a lot more check marks. Dr. Tom was. Oh, you got seven out of nine right. He must be in the head of one, Jean Paul Levesque. Or Triple H, or Paul Levesque, or the boss. So, is that prediction out of the way? And the scorecard. Uh oh. Hit this music. The scorecard. It's not looking good, folks. Eho Del Hobo El Vagabundo Dose 3. Dr. Tom 6. There has to be punishment involved. I'll think of something. But, yep. We'll see. Ah, so with that being said, let's get to some thank yous. This was a weird show because I remember a year ago, Triple Mania was really my highlight show. I think it took me a whole week to go through all the thank yous. I think even longer than that. Actually, I think it did take a whole week. So, but this time because Triple A, they got well, that's smart or unsmart. Uh, they aired live on YouTube. For free, so if people wanted to visit my show, you got my commentary. Plus, you got to see some of the action. But again, you could have watched it for free. I'm never going to fault. This, of course, leads me up. It's a little tease to why I put that title there. But Andre T, you, sir, have earned that six count.
And then Edward Santos, you, sir, are master of the air guitar. So that being said, that was an amazing weekend of wrestling. I'd like to thank all of those. And actually watch. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And one day, one day, well, one day I will get to my emails and I shook my head too fast. And oh, actually, it's not too bad of a lag. It'll hopefully catch up. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. And the most unbelievable thing happened. I couldn't believe it myself. Tamia. Got hacked. Someone actually hacked WooTube. Really? Who out there in the internet community is that big of a loser to hack a pirate wrestling channel? Wow, that's pretty bad. But enough about that. So uh, there's other places I have my repertoire places I can watch stuff. Fortunately, actually a whole bunch of others that like tuned in late to Wutu suffered the same fate as I did. I went to log in because I forgot that I didn't log in. But yeah, I got sense like Twitter. You've been assured by the mods that hopefully will be running soon. I kind of, well, well, I do care because tomorrow's Impact. Tomorrow's my other big show of the week. And we'll see a little bit of the fallout from Final Resolution. Um, their next show, I think, is coming up in about five or six weeks. Whenever. Five, six. One, two, three. Yeah, about uh, five weeks, say. Um, so with that, oh, there's also going to be a little special note at the end of the show, too. Um, so let's, but enough about that. I've been rambling on too long. Let's talk about Raw. Starts off with The Miz, the book that a reading a book that AJ gave him called The Nightmare Before TLC. Or The Night, yeah, The Night Before TLC, whatever it was. And again, it's your very typical story reading. At least, oh, they'll probably do that on SmackDown. No. <coughs> Maybe on Raw, and I think there's going to be a special SmackDown on next wednesday because christmas is on friday they're not going to make the wrestlers do anything i think AEW is going to have a best of show so yeah whatever whatever i'll figure i'll figure out next week next week again big announcement coming um so but to start this start uh raw off it's pretty good um the miz the, the night before tlc <laughs> johnny mundo we will fight for our freedom! Yes, being William Wallace and portraying Drew McIntyre. That was funny. <laughs> I told him to stop hamming it up. 
I think Johnny Mundo's in WWE just to have fun. He's gotten all the all the wrestling bugs kind of left him. He's here to make money and have fun. Hey, if someone's paying me million, a couple hundred thousand dollars or so, have fun, make money, do goofy stuff, I'd be there and trust me. I would do it for ten thousand dollars. In fact, I'd probably do it for a thousand dollars. What am I saying? Yeah, I would do it for a thousand bucks. So for him getting paid a couple hundred thousand, power to him. He was enjoying it. AJ Styles was AJ Styles. Um, he took Braveheart's sword and, and killed poor Drew McIntyre. Such violentness. Such violencia. Then uh, Seamus came out and said, yeah, Seamus was not... Oh, yeah, then the Miz like, altered the ending. Of course, Miz comes out and he cashes in on whoever wins that match and becomes champion. AJ didn't like that part. Seamus came out. Um, AJ threw the Christmas tree at him. And in return, when he went outside, Seamus tossed a gift and hit him right on the head. That was good. And the gift didn't explode. Thankfully, we weren't going to get a um, Christmas match. Because that would have been terrible. Instead, we got AJ Styles versus Seamus. Pretty solid match. I can only catch part of it. This is when I realized that uh, WooTube got hacked. By some loser out there, you know who you are. Here, you got the evil eye. The evil crazy eye. Yeah, I know. I know who you are. I'll find you. You son of a bitch. But yeah. Um, so so what I saw was pretty good. Um, Seamus definitely takes it to AJ Styles. Yourselves is a step is a, is a little bit smarter than a little more cagey veteran. Even though Seamus himself is a veteran, not so much so as AJ Styles. Again, AJ Styles survived the rigors of New Japan, Ring of Honor, and Impact somehow, and wound up in WWE with, with being able to skip NXT. Uh, from there, uh, Seamus he just kind of pounds and kicks AJ Styles. Um, and then AJ eventually makes his comeback. Uh, everything else is kind of like a blur of me trying to figure out what wrestling, of what um, <coughs> legal site to use. So then all I saw is that Seamus got stuck in the ropes and AJ starts. AJ starts hitting with chair shots. I think AJ Styles won anyway. He just wanted to punctuate it by saying, This is what's going to happen to Drew McIntyre. Um, so again, overall, from what I saw and knowing the history that AJ Styles have, I'm not going to downplay his ability. Sheamus is actually pretty darn good ever since his next surgery. So probably a cheeseburger of a match. And we have, um, uh, Jeff Hardy and Bobby Lashley recap the Hurt Business. Then you see New Day, um, Jeff Hardy and, and Riddle. God, that's such a bad combination. The Hardy Bros. Jeff Hardy should be nowhere near Matt Riddle with all the issues that Jeff's had in the past. But as long as he can make it work, maybe he'll straighten out Matt Riddle. Who knows? And you can see I'm not sinking in this chair. My nice, comfy, plush office chair. Oh, so comfy feeling. I'm just so happy it doesn't sink anymore. It's actually kind of the right height, too. Could be like an inch or two taller, but who am I to complain? One day this gets moved over there, and I'll get like super race chair. Yeah. Um, so it starts. So this match, it's going to be the New Day and Jeff Hardy taking on Bobby Lashley, Shelton Benjamin, and uh, Cedric Alexander. This is a pretty good match. It starts off really fast. Uh, by the way, she goes right for the, right for the um, hurt hurt lock, the full Nelson. Tries to get it done uh, early and quick. He beats up on Woods pretty bad. Uh, Cedric still tags himself in. Um, then Kofi gets in. We have a little catch wrestling match. I like that. Whenever you're going to incorporate collegiate style wrestling, or at least freestyle, or even Greco Roman style, it adds. A little bit of legitimacy to it. You're just not like punching each other in the face so you can stand up. It's not a southern barroom brawl. It's actually pro. It's actually like professional wrestling. They're actually doing wrestling stuff. So I like that. I'll always like that. Uh, Jeff 
is, is next in, and Shelton gets in. Um, again, the faces then hold 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 the ring. The New Day. So go, we go to break. New Day gets beat up when we come back from break. Jeff Hardy gets a hot tag. Um, Cedric got blind tag, which is good. Shelton Benjamin blind tags in. Uh, Jeff does a side rush and leg sweep and the, and the prawn spot, but that's broken up. Uh, Woods got caught, got tossed right into the barricade on the outside. That was great. Then, of course, we can't have a match without actually, we had our spot fest and ended when Woods getting caught, it slams to the barricade. Cedric tries a series of rolls up. Um, eventually, with Jeff Hardy. He gets stuck in the hurt lock after going to the top rope. He gets crotched. So that allows Bobby Lashley to put the hurt lock on him. The hurt business wins. Yeah, they stood tall. But they really didn't glow too much. I don't know. I'm, someone's going to be making hard decisions. Come Thursday for my predictions video. Yeah, overall, I can't complain about this match. Tell you what, it's a heck of a lot better start than freaking SmackDown was two weeks ago. It's a cheeseburger of a match. <sighs> and it gets a little downhill from there because we have Lana versus Nia Jax. <laughs> Lana looks absolutely terrified. She gets um, she gets shoved into the mat. Shoved into the turnbuckle corner. Um, Lana did counter with a hurricanrana. However, Nia Jax hit that Samoan headbutt right after that. Uh, was teasing a super Samoan drop. Lana kind of slips through. It looks like she was trying to do a Phoenix powerbomb. That was going to happen. She kicked out Nia's like, legs. So she, she she pulls Nia Jax down. Nia Jax, of course, instinctively goes for the top rope. Lana goes up to the second rope. Does a stomp. And a kind of clutch position. Lana wins. Meh. I'll tell you what. It's pretty good to see. Um, Oscar's there cheering her on. However, in the backstage. Uh, Shana, Shana jumps Asuka. Now he gets to beat up Lana a little bit. But Shana, the, el the elbow. It's an elbow stomp and the ankle stomp. Um, a leg drop on the bent leg. By Nia Jax. And then of all things, Sh Shayna takes off Lana's socks or Lana's shoes because she's just wearing like normal like sneakers and her kick pads. At least that was that's what it really looks like. And listen, Lana, I hate to say it, but if you're going to show everyone your socks, don't wear dirty socks. Like they were like white, but like that off colored. You knew they were dirty because they looked yellowish. There was like a little brown. You could see like the, the, those yellow sweat marks get on white socks. Yeah. Again, Lana is probably has very good hygiene. Just don't wear dirty socks if you know that your shoe's going to come off. Overall, though, for Lana, it was a good match. It's a ham sandwich of a match. And then, of course, we have to have our Elias moment. And because we have an Elias moment, you know he's going to get interrupted. Because WWE says for walk with Elias. But I'm getting worried now. Now that Seth's not going to be around, I do not want Elias to be the preacher guitarist. I don't want him to save Jackson Riker. I don't want him, him to save... Um, Cut Cutler and Blake. I, from just personal experience, I've never, unless it's either like a comedy angle like Brother Love was, or it's something a little bit more sinister, like the Reverend James Mitchell is. Once, because Brother Love really never got preaching, except for to say, I love you. So, with that, I 
don't want to see that happen to Elias, but our truth came in. He said, I'm not going to interrupt you. And like he interrupted Elias. It's something that he stops there. And of course the loser locker room shows up. Jackson, for the most part, just beats up people, tosses poor Tozawa from the ring. Yeah. And I want to know, is Jackson Ryder the new roadie? Only time will tell. Then we have the Miz and Morrison and Keith Lee. They flip a coin. Keith Lee's like, ah, you you won now, but not later. There are rumors that Keith Lee's going to go back to NXT. They really haven't used them. Although, if Braun is legitimately injured, Keith Lee could be the big man in WWE for a while. And I might have to fiddle with this video tomorrow. Shoot. That's okay. Um, yeah, because I just saw the time and realized, like, I need to get to sleep. I was doing, I got distracted by Christmas stuff. So our next match was a handicap match. Uh, Keith Lee and Miz and Morrison. Miz and Morrison have, have exactly the same gear for the most part. It's great. I do love that tag team continuity. Uh, Miz and Morrison, they started to double team Keith Lee. He's a little bit too big. Uh, Morrison, every time Keith Lee would throw a punch, Morrison would easily duck it. Uh, he'd do the hit and run tactics. Very good. We saw a little bit of Johnny Mundo. A little bit. T a tiny, tiny bit. We need to see more. We need to see all of John Mundo. Because I'll tell you what, if the WWE ever used Johnny Mundo to all his potential, he'd, he'd be, he's an instant star. But, um, uh, then we get into the match. Lee just did Lura standing over a standing overhead belly to belly to Miz. Miz just like flew. Morrison. Again, um started to do his moves, move set. Miz got sent into Morrison. Poor Morrison. It was a super uh Morrison actually did hit a super kick on Keith Lee. Got a one. Guess it's like that. One sweet instead of the two sweet. It's the one sweet. Again from a super kick. Then uh, Miz hit the short DAT. <laughs> Mundo did his standing moonsault. That got a two sweet. I probably will finish this video. I'm sorry, folks. I'm this timing stuff. Me just not wanting to do. Me figuring out stuff to do and realizing, oh, it's gonna work. I have to wake up like seven some odd hours. Whoa. Whoa. Um, or my alarm goes off in seven hours, so I'll get up in like seven and a half hours. <laughs> That's actually seven hours and 20 minutes. Uh, Mrs. Morrison again, they did like a bone arrow thing on Keith Lee. Uh, Keith Lee, but then turned that around for a one-on-two suplex instead of, the, instead of the two on one suplex. They even goes corner to corner. Uh, Miz and Morrison actually get get Keith Lee on the ground. They just stack, they just dogpile on top of him. Miz and Morrison get the win. They're showing that hint of John Morrison. It was a, actually a pretty good match. It was it was a cheeseburger match. Okay, then we have um, an Orton and Bray Wyatt recap. Bray Wyatt comes out in an ugly Christmas sweater. He starts selling jokes. The puppets are in the audience. Orton then challenges him to a game of hide and seek. And I want to know where Abby the Witch is. I want to hear Cursing Abby. Cursing Abby is funny. Um, then the next match was Mace versus Ricochet. Mace is just too big for, for, for Ricochet to start off too strong. Takes a missile drop kick. Then a couple leg kicks to to at least bring Mace down to a knee. Eventually, Mustafa, not Musto, not not Mustafar, Mustafa Ali. He's been watching Star Trek, Star Wars way too often. Um, sends in the crew slapjack. Got sent out. Got got kicked in the head. Um, burn! Burn! Say my dear Sebastian, it is I, Bane, and I had to make an appearance in this wrestling match as well, yes. 
You're going to add to the distraction. Ricochet took him out. We got caught in the choke slam power bomb, and that wasn't enough. Then it was a tilt a whirl side suplex. That finished off Ricochet. They all stand over. Poor Ricochet. Poor Ricochet lost again. Jobbed out. Say ham sandwich. Um, see your Bray's in the back. Finds finds Matt Riddle. Um, Matt Riddle says, "Hey man, can we have like pronouns on your show?" Bray is pretty amicable at this point. Um, Ramblin' Rabbit signs a carrot for I guess his rabbit. Mm, he was just standing there. You could tell like they tried to make Ramblin' Rabbit speak, but they didn't have the voice effect. Then it was Shannon Baszler taking on Dana Brooke. Um, just quick strikes. Match started off really fast by Shayna. Um, she Dana did not allow the elbow elbow stomp when Dana tried to go for the uh, flippy back elbow into the corner. She almost got caught in the clutch. And then as Dana Brooke went up to do a moonsault, like Nia Jax just like blatantly shoved her. The rest said, "The hell are you doing? Ring the bell." At least the WWE referees know when to ring the bell for an interference. Um, so Dana Brooke won by, by the definitive baby. Nobody wins, but Dana Brooke wins. Cause he's a hot, big booby blonde baby. She got it where it counts, up top, and on the bottom. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so they beat up Dana Brooke. Manny Rose comes back with a kendo stick. Uh, Shannon beats her up, and then Oscar's the great equalizer. Dana Brooke won in what really was a can of soup match. Our truth in the back, he's talking to Husk as the pig. Mentioned like a PlayStation 6. He says there was still stuff of PlayStation 5. I don't know. I just got myself a PlayStation for like literally a year ago. I think I've managed to play so far just four out of five video games on it. I really don't like the fact that they're coming out with these, these PlayStations so long. PlayStation was around forever. PlayStation 2 is around a really long time. PlayStation 3, I'm still playing PlayStation 2 when PlayStation 3 came out. And like, it was well established. PlayStation 3 came out, and then like, a year or so later. Yeah, when did I get PlayStation 3? Yeah, like about two or three years later, then PlayStation 4 came out. And now I've had my PlayStation 4 for like a year, and all of a sudden there's PlayStation 5. I just can't keep ahead of it. I still use my PlayStation, my PS3. But yeah, he's talking about that. Um, Brave finds, Brave finds him. He, he just shakes his head. He finds his old rocking chair. This little, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. So again, to reiterate, my number one question. What did they do to the sprinkler systems? Or how did they suppress the fire suppressing system in order to have this box literally, like, legit, like, it looked like it was doused in, like, lighter fluid the right way? XPW. Because um, you can see, like, the flames all over it, but it wasn't at the top. And really, the box itself wasn't burning. But still... Those are open flames. I don't know what they did to the sprinkler system. And I wonder if the owner and or management company of the trough knew what they were going to do. I'm just putting that out there. Because that was kind of freaky. Again, when you see like replays of XPWs, like people getting like lit on fire. Like, not even a fireball, just like, or even... Um, Oh, what was it? FMW in Japan. Like, them, like, stabbing and, like, gutting each other with, like, sickles and stuff. Ugh. Although it was kind of cool because Mike Austin did power bomb someone in a pool. That kind of looked fun. I hate to say it. But yeah, getting power bombed in a pool looks cool. And um, then, of course, the, the um, box that was in fire, the fiend came out of that. So we'll see what happens at Tables, Ladders, and Shares. Then, bro, 
Riddle came out to face MVP. This was a quick match. I think I like blinked or I turned around to put something away. Figured, oh, this will be a decent match. No, it wasn't. It was a quick match. Like from what I saw, Riddle got in a knee strike and the Broton. That was it. Wow, that was weird. Um, it was a can of soup. And then to close off the show is AJ and Drew McIntyre, the, 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 uh, the, the belts ascension ceremony. I guess I'll tell you what, that's better than signing. That's better than a contract signing. It's a little bit different. Um, Miz and Morrison show up. They beat up Drew and Drew eventually makes his comeback. And until the, the big dude, like, it's like Louis tosses the steps over the top rope. And listen, Drew has to be careful with those ladders. Ladders have a mind of their own in the WWE for whatever reason. So, yeah. Um, with that, AJ Styles, he did. Oh, don't do it, AJ. AJ Styles beat up Drew McIntyre with a tables, ladders, and chairs. And he climbed the ladder. And, and he touched the belt. AJ Styles isn't winning. I feel so bad for AJ Styles. Um, he also dropped the macho elbow onto Drew. That was kind of cool. But he touched the belt. That's that's the kiss of death right there. So that was a Monday Night Raw. The middle was... Middle and end was terrible. The beginning went fast. Maybe it was the fact that... To me, it got hacked. Who knows? Um, so a couple things. Let's take a little break. And let's go to the Hobo Cooking Show. Let's take that break now. Let me see how bad this is. Hold on, folks. We're on the one, the only, I'm Eho. The Hobo El Vagabundo Dos. And I'm here because I'm here in the most magnificent hobo kitchen. Now my little can off to move that candle to the side. The pan going on for the reason why I'm doing this. Some ground turkey, the reason why we're in this setup, and the reason why I'm here. See bien, bien, bien. Is that I'm here to make an old fashioned, old school recipe. Oh, there goes the El Gato. Well not gato. So that I'm here to make some Mexican pizzas, kind of Taco Bell style. So the first things first, into the big frying pan, I put a chunk. Well, the reason why it's white is because I'm not using meat. I figured since it was still close to Thanksgiving, I'm going to make a, I'll throw that away in a moment. I'm going to make the taco, the Mexican pizzas, not out of ground beef for change, but out of ground turkey. So one thing, we're gonna let this kind of simmer, let this cook off. I'm gonna have my stovetop set up. It's kind of a solid block of, of ground turkey, which is uh, delicioso. Let that cook off for a little bit. And my other ingredients, I have my pico de gallo, the hot stuff. Again, can't go anywhere without some additional queso, some taco shells, some of that, and of course, going to have can't have a can't have to be a pizza. The other cooking pan without some shred fiesta cheese. So I'm gonna let this cook off a little bit, let this warm up. Then you can still still kind of frozen, and then we'll come back in a little bit, and I'll show you how to start building stuff. So here you go, as you can see, it's kind of, it's actually softened up a lot. It takes some time. The key with turkey is, especially with this, you don't want any pink showing. Um, because this is like one, I think it's a little bit more than a pound. I forget if it's a pound and a half. I don't think it's two pounds. Remember, you're always going to lose about a quarter pound of the weight. So right now I'm kind of just kind of basing its own juices and stuff. So eventually we do want that to boil off. So again, with most of this being able to be broken up fairly simply, again, all I'm only using is kind of a spoon. Um, with that being said, it's breaking up a lot easier. So you're able to turn to get every surface cut. Because again, the thing with turkey is that if you do
do have improperly cooked turkey, you will get sick, and that's not necessarily something I want to do right now. Because heaven knows there's enough ways to get sick with not even counting coronavirus or food poisoning. Because I'll tell you what, living here in Daytona Beach, for the most part, getting coronavirus is kind of like the least of my issues. Okay, now that it's breaking up pretty simply, actually going to turn the heat up a little bit. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I really want to get all of this juice out of here. Because I want it to be fairly dry. So when I add the salsa, it, it takes more and it's not really as watered down. So I'm going to leave this open. It's going to steam and boil a lot more. And then we'll come back and see how it's beginning. You can already tell a lot of it's, for the most part, cooked off. Again, I'm kind of kneading it with the spoon. Generally, I don't want to chop it up. I don't want it super fine. So I want to be able to spoon it. <laughs> spoon it. But then, I don't want it so fine where it gets lost, where the meat gets lost and there's no texture to it. And I know that's not how they do it at Taco Bell, but remember this is just, you know, well, juice went over the side, but that's okay. I'm gonna try and break this up as much as I can. Let a lot of, the, again, this liquid come off. Now the liquid's kind of good, because again, this is gonna help cook the meat a little bit. But as you can tell, for the most part, the majority of the meat's cooked, at least very basically. There's still just a little bit, not even like such pale pink. I'll just let that cook and boil off a little bit more. We'll come back and we'll see what happens to it. Again, it's looking much better than it did. Hi. Hey folks, so here we go. So now, I'm going to show you a little bit. Now it's nice and dry in the pan. It's time for the second part. And you can leave it on the same heat. And what I'm going to do next... is that in order to give it a little spice and flavor, I'm just gonna use like a very basic salsa. And this gives the turkey meat a little bit more spice. And pour all that, oh, it smells so amazing. You can hear that sizzle. Again, I'm gonna stir this in. And so it hits everything. You can also tell that I've broken this up into much more smaller manageable pieces. And the fact that most of the juice, even from the sauce, is already gone. I'm going to stir this up. Pull them up. Make sure you get everything kind of nice and coated. Because the box of sauce itself, I'm using kind of almost as a sauce base. And because all this turkey is already cooked, it's really just taking that that juice. And you can kind of can kind of see there's a little bit sauce. So I'm gonna let that kind of reduce to use a proper cooking terminology word. I'm let that reduce a little bit. Stir that in because I want all that juice. Oh, amazing! The peppers, the onions, the tomatoes, a little bit of everything in there. And one got one got loose. Goes back in the pan. Even Lagato, because she's the cat, kind of getting impressed with my feast. So let's say we're going to let that cook off for a little bit more. And while that's cooking, give me one moment. You can see all that steam evaporating off. Actually, I'm going to get my adult beverage. Ready? I have my nice big glass of ice. As you can tell, I don't want to hold it too close to the steam. And this time, what I'm going to have is a very simple concoction. I make fancy 7 and 7. So I have my Evan Williams bourbon. Put this there while that's steaming off. Um, you can use whatever soda you like because I'm old school. I like to use a more traditional mix. I'm just going to use a lemon lime soda. Doesn't really matter. 
And since this is actually 90 proof, I have to be a little bit careful with it. Normally I'd pour for a good solid three seconds. With this, it's gonna be more like two. And by the time that's done, I'm gonna start building. Oh, so good. So here, we get a good angle here again. One, two. Oh boy, that's gonna be more than enough. Um, if you really like your beverages, you can always add more. I'm not. Again, top this off. I should be making like a unique sound once it gets to the top. And to me, this has this amazing golden amber color. And let's see here. Let's see how good it is. Hmm. Perfect. So let's go back to cooking. So, let's see, four minutes. That's okay. Do we need to put that on top of something else? Let's see, what else is here? Oh, there we go. So I'm going to start to build. So that's actually reducing nicely. Give you a little bit more. So again, you can do that. Again, the juice is there. And this turkey has really, instead of being just a white meat, has this nice reddish hue to it. And from all the peppers, you can actually smell it a lot more and turn the heat off. For the most part, that's done. I'll keep that spoon there. I'm gonna build, begin building Mexican pizzas. These Mexican pizzas are muy grande. And it's one of the things that, again, a lot of people, a lot of wrestling fans were very upset with. Taco Bell, they canceled the Frito Burrito. Again, staple wrestling food. Mexican pizza, very simple to make. So here, I guess you can see that, let's see here. That's close enough. So I have my pan, I'm making a few of these, so I'll put say two in there, and two at a time. Take some of the base filling, and just kind of fill up the bottom. Now some people will add extra peppers, onions, I f peppers, onions, and tomatoes. I figured since I've added the salsa to the turkey mixture already. And you'd be surprised how fast this actually goes once you start adding in the filling. And actually, I'm also going to turn my oven on. I want a nice, toasty 420, 430 degrees, because 420 just sounds like something bad that I might get banned for on YouTube. I'm going to put my nice turkey filling in. I get it really almost all the way to the edge. That's like three in there. Nah, two's good though. Two's good. And it's going to get nice and crisp. And remember, this is supposed to look a little bit like the one in Taco Bell, so it's not going to be super pretty. Heaven knows Taco Bell never did anything super pretty. But it's going to have all the trimmings and fixings though to it. Let's see, so there's that, there's that. Remember, these were also meant to be a personal item, so it's not that much. Um, with Taco Bell, you always have, of course, a little cheapo queso. Uh, I'm just going to grab a spoon here. Spoon. Just kind of pour that on. Bit. Stir that in. And this is queso, so this also has a little pepper onion, this little mix. Um, don't go to the edge with this because remember you're going to press down and probably bad things will happen then. On top of your second shell, a little press down. Again, it's always going to ooze out a little bit. That's why I don't go right to the edge. That tastes amazing. And this is going to be kind of like to taste a little bit. I'm going to use pico de gallo. This to me gives it a little bit fresher taste. And again, it's just really personal preference from there. So it's personal preference from there. Um, I do prefer the Pico. It's a little fresher taste to me. I'm going to do the same thing. 
and I spoon on, try and make it one nice mono layer. Ooh, big fancy word of the day. Mono layer. I don't want to heap it on. We'll just kind of put some in the middle, press it around. Again, this is all up, up to whatever you feel like. I think because it has the tomatoes, onions, it gives it kind of that near like pizza sauce type feel. And then, of course, you can't have a pizza without more cheese. Take the already shredded. You can use whatever cheese. I like the Fiesta blend mainly because, well, it's again a nice an even coating. And then I'll make my second one really the same way. I'll show you how I again I won't give so much instruction. Then you can top it off however you want. You know what? I figure there's enough spice on there. That's pretty good. And as you can tell, I'm actually going through a lot of the film already. So you're not really going to have that much left over. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but again, once you kick it off, it gets smaller. You don't want to fill it up to the edge because it's not kind of squeezes a little bit oddly. But again, that nice little mono layer of salsa, of, I'll call it salsified turkey. Yeah, it was just Thanksgiving, so yeah, that's okay. I think one day I'm gonna make taco burgers. This is using taco meat instead of ground beef. And that's kind of a very typical beef burger recipe, just using seasoned beef instead of ground meat at the time. Yeah, I've already kind of gone through, really almost, well, I'll say a good third at least of the meat. The same thing with the cheese. Or some there. You can tell it goes in pretty quick. It's only like halfway there. And a little dab there. I'm gonna spread that out too. The taco shell, give it a little press. Again, a nice little mono layer of the veg. This time getting the hot pico de gallo. And you can use tomatoes, you can do mild pico de gallo. This part's really all up to taste. I know I wanna say Taco Bell they would just put some cheese on top. I like mine with a little bit more sustenance. I need more roughage in my diet. I want to be a little bit healthier. And the same is true. Kind of spread that cheese around, make it look nice and pretty, the way a pizza should be. You can have your nice crust. That's all set. So now I have the oven. It's preheating, so it's going to take a while. And to the oven it goes. And you're just going to cook it long enough where it gets a little bit melty. Put it there. And we'll come back to it whenever it's done. So I want to say everything's done because I can hear things sizzling. But my plate, um, turn that off because that really doesn't need to be on that much. Uh, Seriously, I have, oh, I even have leftover nap. I even have leftover napkins from Taco Bell to use. That's the best. Let's see here. Oh, Seriously, I have, got my adult beverage here. So delicioso it is. Check out that scene coming out of the oven. Oh my goodness. So amazing looking our Mexican pizzas. So I made two. And for the most part, I'm actually, wow, that came off a lot easier than I thought it would. So I have the one, I'll just leave the other on, one on the pan. So now you have a nice little treat. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video. Remember, I am Hijo del Hobo El Vagabundo. Si, si, si. Thank you for watching. Please like conti and continue to support the channel. Thanks. Bye. And I hope everyone liked that little cooking demonstration. Thereby, maybe I can go time to do it. Who needs sleep anyway?
Yeah, who needs sleep? Um, it's a bed this time. Yeah, I'll 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 fiddle with this tomorrow. Take half hour. Yeah, I, I can I can make it work. Some I I can make anything work. Cause they're all pretty close. Yeah. Um, this video is going up like probably tomorrow when I'm making my other show. Um. So I hope you enjoyed the little cooking segment there by Ijo del Vagabundo El Hobo on how to make Mex on how to make the old well, nearly old school at least homemade taco pizzas by Taco Bell. A little bonus segment. Oh, major announcement. Let's see, let me go confirm this. I think I still have to get my tickets too. But yep, yeah, live wrestling, folks, is coming back here to Daytona Beach at the Ocean Center. Daytona Beach. Let's see here. Let me just confirm that it's there. So, oh, wow. Oh, it is there. Sweet. Let's see how much the tickets are. They should be fairly cheap. Oh wow! Look at that. Forty-seven lower section one hundred six. Sixty bucks, but that's like there. Sixty-nine dollars. That's weird. One hundred six. That's not bad. Two tickets. From sixty. So I wonder. Oh shoot, you have to buy two tickets? What the hell? What? Mobile entry tickets. Must have sounds smart. Do not print these tickets. the hell so you have to figure out how to make this and why do they charge so much but yeah i might be going to the I, well i say this now i might be going to the jingle brawl parking passes now they're pretty cheap the jingle brawl it's the nw nawa event so you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, here at the Ocean One Center. Possibly, I could use to treat myself. Yeah, it might be cheaper if I get them. I'll tell you what, they freaking charge too much. I wonder if you can buy them. Important event information. All tickets are subject to restrictions and requirements. Whatever. If the event is held without fans, if the event is held without fans, you'll receive a refund as if the event was canceled. I don't even understand that. That's okay. I just actually am curious if it's cheaper. I know there's like some ridiculous markup. So I might actually see if I can buy the tickets there cheaper. Generally, you can. But yep, overall, I do plan to be there. Maybe I'll drag, drag Jorge with me. Just say, Jorge, we're going to a wrestling event. That's okay. So you might see me, the one, the only Hobo Tom. And again, if you give, if you say, hey, you're Hobo Tom, I'll, I'll even give you a free shout out. So I'll have my camera there recording and documenting what happens there. Cool. Um, other than that, that's that's it. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And thank you, everyone, for watching my Triple Mania show. Um, it was tons of fun. People I did get to interact with were really cool. Um, everyone take care. And this will probably go up sometime during my Impact show. Bye. So again, to reiterate, my number one question, what did they do 
to these sprinkler systems or how 